Hello guys, it is me, the Tank Index here. I apologize for um, the lack of video yesterday and that this one is a day late. Um, I've been busy just because, you know, I've had to actually go back to school and it's been, you know, it's taken some years to I haven't been to school since spring, so, uh, you know, that's why I'm a bit late on this video, but today we're going to talk about two early ideas and tank prototypes that I think are interesting enough for a video. Um, so starting off, we have the Da Vinci tank. The da Vi it was designed by Leonardo Da Vinci. You've probably heard of him as a painter. Um, while under the patronage of the Duke of Milan in 1487, because, you know, uh, Italy was not reunited then. It was like a billion different states in of Germany. Um, it was inspired by a turtle shell, like a lot of early land ships, which I find actually interesting. It would have a covering of wood and reinforces metal plates being slanted to deflect enemy fire, which you know, having slanted armor is actually a tank design not fully in use until late World War II. Um, which is actually pretty interesting that Leonardo was ahead of his time like that. Um, it would be powered by four, four strong men turning cranks. So, I'm guessing this thing would move about one or two miles an hour. Um, and it would only be armed with an array of light cannons around the vehicle, which, you know, only, which, yeah, that would still be a lot of firepower for the time. Um, the gears in the design were reversed, which is commonly thought to be intentionally misdesigned by Da Vinci in case it was stolen, so no one actually used this. Though it wouldn't actually have much use, he actually designed it to intimidate the enemy, because it wouldn't have a serious application, because, you know, if someone shoots it, bam, you just lost a bunch of men and a, lot, a bunch of cannons. This thing really, really wouldn't be that useful. But, you know, a recreation with the proper gears was made in 2010 by a group of engineers. It's drivable in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. And it is the boss of the Renaissance faction in tabs. It is commonly referred to as the first tank concept, but it's actually not. First of all, it doesn't have treads, which, in my opinion, is a requirement for a tank. And, you know, it's more of a fighting vehicle. It just is not really a tank. Well, maybe an early armored car, I guess. But now we move on to the Le Vavasour project. I'm going to mispronounce a lot of things because it's French. It was designed in 1903 by artillery captain Leon René Le Vavasour. It was described as a self-propelled cannon project and is seen as the first tank concept made by the French and one of the first in general. It would have a driver, a gunner, and a commander and it would be armed with a 75mm cannon and an 80 horsepower engine. I know this image isn't very good but you can get a better idea here. Um, the objective of the machine, this is a report by the artillery committee when it was proposed. The object of the machine is to create an automobile artillery piece capable of going over the rough terrain only accessible to horse carriages and offering to the personnel and the engine parts a complete protection from indirect and or small arms fire. So it's essentially a artillery piece that moves faster and protects the crew inside, which is a pretty interesting idea. However, with some more reports, we learned a lot more about it. The all-terrain mobility necessary to this machine is achieved by a contraption equivalent to a wheel of a very large diameter, which is basically what they call treads. This contraption, called an articulated wheel, consists of a short rim of wedge-shaped blocks, voiceuls, connected together by bolts around which they can rotate, and with an elastic connection tending to close up the space between the voiceuls. The faces of the links adjacent to the ground serve as the sole of the wheel, and the links opposite form a race, chemin de roulement. Uh, these two phases are cylindrical and concentric. Those forming the sole have a radius of 4 meters. These faces form two continuous surfaces when the blocks are connected. A box is positioned with rollers on the races of the two identical articulated wheels. The rollers are positioned so as to maintain the natural shape of the articulated wheels. Besides these rollers, the box supports two sprockets on each side, the teeth of which mesh with the bolts of these links. They are rotated by an 80 horsepower engine. The box made of bulletproof steel holds an artillery piece of 75 millimeters on a special gun carriage. It transports one commander, three servants, and ammunition. And this report was made by the general president of the technical artillery committee um, to the army minister, February 1st, 1905. Now you might be asking, well, this thing seems like a pretty good, you know, vehicle for a time. Why was it adopted? Well, because a lot of generals at this time, and even up to and after World War One were very, let's just say, um, opposed to new technology. A lot of them, you know, they maybe thought that two machine guns per infantry brigade was enough. Or, you know, they just thought horses were the best thing ever. It could never be replaced by anything. So mechanization was sort of like, 
it's a novelty, but we don't really think it'll be actually used, which obviously we all know how wrong they were. So there, and additionally, horses did really do this job better of transporting artillery. I mean, yes, this would protect the crew, but honestly, I mean, this would be a lot more expensive than horses, and the French army just wasn't going to go for it. Especially with Germany being a rising naval power, so a lot of money had to be put on that. Um, having a whole new vehicle or like this, which would need retrained crews and all that, would just be, you know, they just didn't want that. So final assessment of these two, the war machine designed by Da Vinci was a uh, insane design. At the time, it wasn't known by anyone. I mean, it was went to the full extent that it was incorrectly designed, so no one could steal it. Um, and I mean, you know, if it was made and used, I really don't think it would be useful at all. I think it would be more used to just use the cannons individually as actual cannons. Um, the Leva Vassil project, on the meanwhile, was an actual rational design. It was made as a mobile artillery platform, and it would have actually sold, served that role effectively up to and including World War One. Um, unfortunately, you know, horses were cheaper and were in larger numbers and well known, so it just wasn't adopted. And these two are just fascinating instances of tank designed, tank designs made before World War One and for very strange reasons. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know this was supposed to be an American video. I've been very off and on. I really don't know what the next videos are. I have a lot of subjects I want to cover. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and this is the Tank Index out. See you next time.